Hey everyone, my name is Lindsay. I'm a mountain school instructor for the North Cascades Institute. I'm joined here by our owl friend. This is a great horned owl. It's stuffed or taxidermied. Um, I am here to chat a little bit about our owl friend and its fellow owl species out there. Um, owls are a really cool member of the family of raptors. Um, they are the only member of the raptor family who hunts at night. They're the only nocturnal members. Although some owls are active during the day um, and others are only active at dawn and dusk. That's a, what we call crepuscular if they're only active at dawn and dusk. But owls being active at night also require some really cool and special adaptations that allow the owls to hunt and kill their prey in total darkness. Now, as I set our owl friend down here, I want you to think a little bit about what are some special tools that this owl might need to have or some challenges that it might need to address in order to be able to hunt and kill its prey at nighttime. Awesome. Hunting at night is a really big challenge. Um, and you might have thought about how those big owl eyes might help the owl to see better at night, and they totally do. Those really big owl eyes allow it to have much better night vision than we do, but not necessarily good enough vision in order to be able to hunt exclusively with their eyes. Owls actually rely mostly on their hearing in order to be able to hunt their prey. Our ears are right next to each other on the sides of our head, but owl ears are asymmetrical, meaning that one ear is higher than the other ear, which enables them to pinpoint exactly where their prey is. We're gonna do a little demonstration to kind of show you how this is done, how this impacts Al's ears. Cool. So I have Emily here as a volunteer. She's also a mountain school instructor. Um, and we're gonna be demonstrating how our hearing works and then comparing it to owl hearing so that you have a better idea of how that asymmetrical hearing really helps owls to pinpoint their hearing. So I have Emily, she's blindfolded so she can't see. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be clacking these sticks around Emily's head and she's going to be pointing to where she is hearing that sound coming from, All right? You ready, Emily? So you did great, Emily. You can stay sitting there. Now, you'll notice that Emily was pretty good at getting the left and right. She could tell generally what side of her body it was coming from, but on some of the up and down ones, she could tell it was over there, but like couldn't point out exactly where it is. Now, as the sound is waving over and reaching Emily's ear, if it's coming from over here, it's gonna hit her left ear first and then hit her right ear. So Emily's brain can tell, oh, hey, it hit my left ear first, which means it's coming from my left side. But if I clap the sticks above Emily, it's going to hit both of her ears at the same time. Now, this makes it hard for humans who have ears on the same level to tell whether sound is coming from above us or below us. We're really good at the left and right, but up and down makes it really hard for us to tell. Now, if Emily's ears were like an owl and she had one ear higher and the other ear lower, that sound coming from up above would hit her top ear first, letting her know, hey, that sound is above me and it's to the right of me, which would enable her to pinpoint exactly where her prey was scurrying around without having to see it. Owl hearing would not be really effective if as they were flying to catch and kill their prey, their wings were making a whole bunch of noise that could obscure their hearing. So owls have to have really silent flight in order to not only sneak up on their prey, but also allow their ears to give them a really good image of where their prey is. So if you take a closer look at an owl wing, you can see that an owl wing is not only some nice soft feathers, um, but the edges of this owl wing, you can bring it up nice and close for you here. 
The edges of this owl wing are nice and flared. It looks almost like there's a bunch of eyelashes here. These are what we call fimbriae. And these fimbriae break through the air and muffle the sound of the owl's wings. And as we test this, you'll be able to hear the difference between an owl wing, which is nice and quiet, and a less quiet bird, like a great blue heron, which is much louder. And this silent flight enables owls to be able to hunt and kill their prey at night. So the combination of that really silent flight and their really excellent hearing helps make owls really effective nocturnal predators. Thanks for tuning in to hear more about owls with me. Um, if you're super interested about this creature, I hope you will seek out some more resources. Um, check out our blog in order to see a little bit more about these really cool creatures.